Shalom, my bright guy, Miss Pac guy, peace and blessings, family. In this video, it's gonna be like a book review. I'm gonna be talking about the famous Africans and Native Americans by Jack D. Forbes. What people don't understand about this book is this book is very slept on, very underrated, but it's a very important tool that we all should have, dude. We all need this book. But this book here, Anything. Talks about everything. And guess how much it is? $25 on Amazon. And they could change it. So, freaking buy the book fast. Because they can easily change the price real quick. The language and race of the evolution of red black peoples. There is drop on every page. Nobody can turn a page and say, that's wrong. That doesn't make sense. There are so many sources in this book. The book starts stating its sources on page 273. This, one, this is where the sources start, okay? And the book ends its sources on page 334. And all of that sources. Okay, so that's almost a hundred pages of sources. And let me tell you, the sources are stacked on top of each other like this. I mean, it's source on source on source. So don't try to discredit this book because this book is accurate and dead on. And it's the author, Jack D. Forbes, he did a very good job of piecing everything together. I love this book. And you will definitely see the book in a lot of my videos. You will definitely see this book in a lot of my videos. Now, I want you to read this book on your own. So I'm not going to read you everything inside the book, you feel me? I'm just going to show you a, key, uh, a few key uh, things in the book. It's kind of like a movie trailer, okay? Page one, there's already, already freaking drop, right? A lot of drop. I'm not going to read all of what I got highlighted. But basically, the the heading is the heading is Africans and Americans intercontinental contacts across the Atlantic to 1500 Americans crossing the Atlantic before Columbus. Because you know we're all taught to believe that every single Native American stayed in America before Christopher Columbus came. But no, we had connections with the world. The world had connections with us. Everybody knew about America, man. America, what's the, what's the stuff? You feel me? Everybody knew about this place. Everybody. Everybody. White people knew about America before they want you to think they knew about America. Because they'll tell you, oh, we, we didn't even know what America was. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But let me talk about the Africans and how the Africans and Americans have a lot in common, because that's how the book starts off. It's, you know, the title is Africans and Americans, right? So the book talks about Africans and Americans. That's how it starts off. So it says, The meeting of Native Americans and Africans of people from two great continents of the earth can be described in many ways. Pia, an American child, the son of Tahoa, the Miss Woman, became a brother to Anansi, the Spider-Man. Both agreed to live among human beings. Thus, the spirit powers of black Africans are said to have established a close cooperative relationship with the spirit powers of the Americans. Thus, the same cooperation and reciprocal relationship can be seen in Brazil, where the Tiponoaga and the Karingua come on, blah, 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 big words, uh, exist side by side with those of Congo, Angolia, and Nago orientation where Native Americans and African spiritual powers are called upon for assistance in various contexts. Now, I know that's a lot of words, but basically what it's saying is that the culture and religion of South American Indians is the same culture and religion of West Africans. Now, why is that? Simply because if you have seen my video I made on, on Kush and how the Kushites the first empire in Africa was Kush, okay? How the Kushites actually originated in America, meaning South American Indians brought civilization to Africa. 
This is a proven fact. The archaeologists know this. The paleontologists know this. Okay? Civilization started in South America, not in Africa. Okay? Now, it's basically saying that the religions are the same. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's get it. Let's talk about something else this book got. Page 14. Then it says, then the book goes on to talk about how Africans travel to the Americans. How Africans travel to the Americans, like I said, because this place had connections. We had connections with everybody, and everybody had connections with us. We traded resources and goods with the world. We did. It says right here on page 14, Thus Columbus wanted to verify the truth of what the Americans of Haiti had stated previously to the effect of black African people had came from south and the southeast with their azagaya, their spearheads, were made of guanine or brass or bronze-like mixture of gold, silver, and copper. So basically, the aboriginal Haitians were telling Christopher Columbus that sometimes... Africans come over here. People from the other side of the sea come over here and they trade goods with us. They're spears made of gold, copper, and brass. We was trading stuff with the world. That's just how it was, man. Let's move on. Let's move on. Page 18. Now we're going to page 18. Page 18 is good because now it's not talking about Africans. It's talking about white people how even white people had connections with the Americas before Christopher Columbus. Now, I want you to take a, a minute and think for a minute. Because a lot of people want to ask me, how come white people never knew about America until Christopher Columbus, but it clearly says that the Grecians sold the children of Israel into slavery. Okay, you got to understand this also. The, it, the, the scripture did say the Grecians sold the children of Israel into slavery, and that's in the book of Joel. But then you got to understand, Greece did not come into power until it conquered Babylon. And the children of Israel had to be taken into Babylon before the Greeks could take them into captivity. Understand this, Alexander the Great was the most famous Greek emperor of history, and his tomb was found in Illinois. Alexander the Great has been proven to have conquered Babylon. Why did he go to America to do such? It says, according to the sagas, now the sagas are just the, um, it's just the documentation of the Vikings, the Norse, the Norse people. A pale colored woman with chestnut hair was reportedly seen amongst the Americans in Vinland, aka Newfoundland, in 1006. Thirdly, the Norse reached Greenland in 985. They found both toward the east and west traces of human dwellings. Okay, now then it says, nonetheless, the remains seen by the Norse were clearly of recent origin. This suggests the abandonment of South Greenland of the Dorset people could have been due to raiding by the Norse or Celtic pirates in years prior to 985. If so, it is conceivable that the captives were carried back to Europe since both the Norse and Irish possessed slaves in that area. The Norse who settled in Greenland before AD 1000 made several journeys westward to Markland, Labrador, and Vinland, Terra Nova, or Newfoundland. This is the Canada region. Vikings went there, okay? Look what it says. In 1009, they captured two young Americans in Markland and carried them away to Greenland and in all probability to Norway. This is simply saying white people hundreds of years before Christopher Columbus came to America and started, and started enslaving Indian people, shipping them across the Atlantic and bringing them to Europe. This is historical proven facts, okay? Let's go to page 21. Thus, by late 1494, there were in Lipson, Pretos, or Negroes, Blacks, it's a parenthesis, Blacks, of various colors, including reddish or copper colored people. These latter were probably Americans, perhaps from the West Indians by Columbus, from Brazil, by an unknown Portuguese navigator, or most likely from Newfoundland. Interestingly, on January 11, 1503, a sailor from Lipson presented for sale in Valencia, Spain, five Negroes. Okay, 
Thus, Miguel was born in 1483 and was taken from Newfoundland, Canada to Lipson when he was small, so probably before 1493. They were among slaves in Terra Nova, sold to Lipson, Seville, and Valencia after 1500. That's talking about how black Indian people of America were taken and brought to Spain. And they were classified as black people. They were called Negroes. And they described them as reddish or copper colored people. And I'm going to go into what it, what is a Negro. On page 71 it says, Thus Negro is used for Indian, not for someone from Africa. We must understand the difference between a Negro and an African. Then we know that the Negro was later called the North American nigger, the term nigger, the tree nigger, the red nigger, the prairie nigger, all of these niggers are actually in use for American Indians. And when we cross reference to the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, we see the definition of Ham and it tells us he's the progenitor of the dark races, the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Canaanites, but it says clearly not the Negroes. The, these races here are African people, but why not Negroes? Aren't Negroes African people? If you are ever called a nigger by a racist white person, or even a Negro, understand this. They're literally telling you that this is your land. That's what they're telling you. They probably don't know that, but that's what they're telling you. I love page 23. Because it goes into enormous depth on exactly where did Columbus bring those slaves to. It says on page 23, thus even Columbus was loading five ships with slaves. He was proposing to sail 4,000 in various parts of the Mediterranean and along the coast of Africa. Columbus was kidnapping American Indians and bringing them to Europe and Africa. If you look at my video on DNA, the DNA deception, you will see why whenever black Americans take DNA tests, we always find matches of people who live in West Africa. Why is that? Because our people was taken to West Africa. That's why we can find matches in DNA. It, it's not the opposite. It's not that we were taken from West Africa. It's that we were taken to West Africa. Our people were taken to West Africa. That's why we find matches in DNA. On page 25, it says, But the tens of millions of Americans who disappeared after 1492 did not all die in the Holocaust inflicted with the Americas, but many were sent to Europe and Africa where their descendants still live. So look at this. You know, if they were enslaving us, murdering us, murdering is the main one, and dispersing us. Okay, whenever we think of the Middle Passage or the transatlantic slave trade, we're thinking about millions of Africans being taken from Africa and brought to America, when it's really vice versa. It was millions of Americans taken from America and brought to Africa. That's why you see some of our people who look just like us over there. I mean, this is facts. Because you see, most Africans don't look like me. But there are some that do. And there's a reason why.